Kyoto, Japan's majestic city of ancient temples and serene gardens, offers superb cultural treasures and a variety of sensual delights. Your most enjoyable activity will probably be strolling through the artistically designed garden landscapes with their winding paths, tranquil ponds, stately trees, lush vegetation, and traditional wooden temples. So wear comfortable shoes and be prepared to do a lot of walking. We're going to take you on some wonderful strolls through the gardens, around the temples, and into downtown and show you the highlights of this magnificent city. Kyoto's modern downtown is also fascinating, filled with shops, restaurants, historic structures, the occasional geisha, and plentiful people watching. These sublime gardens unfold as you walk along paths that lead through changing vistas around each bend, where you can stop frequently to absorb each new perspective looking left, right, up, and down. These different views are enhanced by small statues and footbridges, bamboo railings, temple backdrops, and glimpses of distant mountains, all exquisitely arranged to be appreciated in moments of reflection. Kyoto was ranked as the number one visitor destination in the world by the readers of Travel and Leisure magazine for two years in a row in 2014 and 2015. Quite an honor. Maybe you haven't previously thought much about Buddhist temples or Shinto shrines and perhaps never had them on a priority list of must-see places, but visiting this city is different and we'll show you the harmony and the splendid beauty of those temple sites. It's all about the harmony of the gardens and their relationship to the venerable wooden structures which meld into a delightful experience. Nature lovers will gain high value from the effort and those with a spiritual bent can get that much more out of the visit. Kyoto has got 17 places listed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites which is an extremely large number for that ranking. And there's another seven major historical sites designated by the local government, and much more to see for those with abundant time, including museums, palaces, stone monuments, traditional neighborhoods, and the modern downtown, theaters, and day trips to nearby cities such as Nara. Time can also be spent admiring the pottery, fabrics, tea ceremonies, flower arrangements, dance, cuisine, and calligraphy, all of which are highly developed here. You should try and spend at least two days in Kyoto so that you can visit the major attractions and experience the essence of this special city. Or you could easily stay more, stay a week, and never run out of worthwhile attractions in this former imperial capital, which has a staggering 2,000 temples and shrines. You'll never run out of places to see. Kyoto is surrounded on all sides by numerous temples, shrines, and gardens, and they're located within a few miles of the town center. A reasonable two-day strategy for dealing with the array is focus attention in one direction. In our case, we looked at Kyoto's east side, Higashiyama, which has a very high concentration of sites nestled on the edge of the lovely hilly topography. In the other directions, Kyoto is relatively flat, but the gardens always have some interesting landscape design to create a pleasant contoured ground surface and delightful curved paths to lead you through it. Many of these temple sites on the east side are in walking distance of each other, reaching about four miles from south to the north end of the cluster in Higashiyama. So you can walk between some of these sites, as we'll be pointing out in the series. However, when you add up the amount of walking within each site and time spent shopping along the approach lanes, the combined distance is going to reach well over 10 miles. So you'll sometimes want to use buses, the subway, and taxis. A two-day pass for bus and subway can be purchased, but if time is an issue, you will find taxis are a big help now and then. And the taxi drivers are very courteous with their white gloves and honesty, 
even if they don't speak any English, and this gives you a chance to sit down and rest while you're being transported between sites. More than 50 million visitors come to Kyoto each year. Most of them are just staying for the day and then moving on. But about one million of them annually do spend the night in a local hotel. There's lots of accommodations of all price ranges. And most of the visitors are Asian. No doubt with the growth of Chinese travel, these numbers are going to continue increasing. These crowds of visitors could very much interfere with your appreciation of Kyoto's heavenly gardens. So try and visit during the less busy late fall or early spring in order to properly experience the tranquil garden atmosphere. Temperatures will be nippy then, many trees will lack leaves and garden colors are more subdued, but the absence of crowds makes those trade-offs very much worthwhile. Especially in early December, when we were photographing these visuals, the fall colors still linger and yet the crowds are not around, making a perfect combination. And late March is similar. It offers fresh air scented by spring flowers before that stampede of cherry blossom viewers arrives. Crowds don't matter so much for normal city attractions like a park or street scenes, you know, downtown streets, the amusement arcade and shops and museums. But the temple gardens here are those precious jewels that you should really try to view in quiet times during that off season. The fragile beauty of the gardens can send you to another dimension if the ambience is right. But communication with nature is pretty difficult when there are four busloads of tourists right in front of you in the picture. Gazing upon a Zen pebble garden alone or with a few others is a completely different experience than jostling in a crowd for a wedge of the best view, everybody trying to take a picture in front of you. However, even if you cannot visit during those ideal small windows in time, Kyoto is a four season destination that can be appreciated throughout the year. If you don't mind crowds, consider the peak seasons of cherry blossom viewing in April and colorful foliage reaching its peak during November, or arrange your itinerary to connect with one of the major festivals. But try to avoid the national holiday periods when it is really jam packed. Minimize interference by visiting major sites early or late in the day. And now we're going to take you on a visit to two of the major temples in the south part of Kyoto, Fushimi Inari Taisha and Tofukuji. The Fushimi Inari Taisha Shrine in Kyoto is most famous for its long rows of vermilion tori gates, nearly 5,000 gates in all. Various temple structures are in front, including the famous Romon Gate, but the main attraction is that vast network of Tori Gates, which have made Inari one of the most popular destinations in town. Whenever you see the Tori Gate, you know that uh, this is not a Buddhist temple, but instead it's a Shinto shrine. And this is the main shrine of this particular Shinto sect that's dedicated to the gods of rice and sake. Throughout Japan, there are 40,000 other Inari shrines, but this is the principal one. The Inari shrine is a wonderful Shinto experience. You walk through all of these different gateways along a path that winds through the forest. This is the largest collection of Tori gates anywhere in the world. You could spend one or two hours walking this pathway that extends for almost three miles. The visit you're watching was in early December, and so it was not crowded. And yes, the temperatures were kind of nippy, but comfortable. And we saw some cats. Notice the steam coming out of their breath. Temperatures in the morning like this were in the 30s. The gates are surrounded by a natural forest and by various small cultivated gardens with some ponds here and there. You can walk all the way up the hillside to the top of Mount Inari, which is about 240 meters high, and you won't get lost. Just follow the path, follow the tunnels of Tori Gates. 
The biggest problem with the Inari Shrine is that it's just too popular. It's being loved to death. Remember, we're traveling in early December when it's very peaceful, quiet, and nearly empty. The crowds during the season, during the day, are phenomenal. There will be probably a thousand people all walking through these gates, so it can get pretty congested. For example, if you look at the comments on TripAdvisor about this temple shrine area, every other comment mentions the crowding, people in the way, people taking pictures, people stopping and talking and kind of interfering with the experience. Now, these people are visiting during the high season and during the middle of the day. So the way to avoid it is come in the off season. As we are, it's December as we're walking around, early December. It's a perfect time to be in Kyoto. Or if you're here in the busy season, come very early. You can come just after sunrise or come very late in the day just an hour before sunset and you'll have the added benefit of some extra rich colors and fewer people. The site is especially popular during the New Year's holiday, Japan's most important festivity, when it attracts nearly three million people during the three-day period. Of course if you enjoy people watching then this is no problem, you can see it as a bonus. There'll be lots of folks out here appreciating the site and most of them are Japanese tourists so it's like an extra bonus for you in that regard. People from throughout Japan love to come to Kyoto and visit these wonderful gardens and shrines. Arrive early and walk through this phenomenal lineup of several thousand tori gates standing next to each other and forming a magical two-mile tunnel through the forest. It's easily reached from the town center by train on either the JR line stopping at Inari Station or the Keihan line to the Fushimi Inari Station. The first shrine was built in the year 711 in a different part of town to the southwest and then it was relocated here a century later in 816. The main shrine structure was built in the year 1499 and all of the Tori gates were added subsequently over many centuries. Each of these 5,000 Tori gates was donated by a Japanese business and maintained by them, and they put their name on them, because the shrine is a patron of business and merchants and manufacturers, but especially of the god of rice and sake. It seems like we're walking around a little bit in circles, and we are, because once you're inside the shrine area, you're walking through the tunnel of these story gates and you can get to the end and then just turn around and walk back through that same tunnel. Or you could continue. It does make a complete loop circuit if you walk all the way up to the top of the hill. But you might not want to go that far, so feel free anytime to just walk in part of the way and then turn around and walk back out the same way that you came in. It's a different experience either way, going uphill or going downhill. <laughs> the vermilion color of the gates is quite dazzling and contrasts delightfully with the green garden setting. There are even a few restaurants in the shrine area, which figures if it's going to take you three hours to walk along every pathway, so you can get some refreshments and especially locally themed dishes such as the Inari Sushi and Kitsune Udon, both of which feature pieces of fried tofu, which was said to be a favorite of the foxes who were some of the gods of this shrine area. From the Inari Shrine, we continue north about a half a mile to the temple and gardens of Tofukuji. The Tofukuji Buddhist Temple is considered one of the five great Zen temples of Kyoto. Originally built in the year 1236, it burned down after a couple of centuries and then was rebuilt in the 15th century to the original plans and stands today as a fine example of a medieval Zen temple. Typical of most Kyoto temples, it's a group of more than a dozen wooden structures in a lush garden setting especially famous for the very large Sanman Temple Gate, 65 feet high, and the bright fall colors of maple leaves when you're here in the autumn season. 
Here too we have a small Shinto shrine area with another Tori tunnel leading up to a staircase that brings you up a hill. At this temple complex of Tofukuji, there are about a dozen sub-temples. One of the things that's most noted for is the fall colors. We arrived in early December, but still there was the lingering color of the maple leaves, which were really bright and spectacular. Another week or two, they'll all be blown down by mid-December, late December, the colors will be largely gone. Of course, the peak of colors would happen in the month of November. And it would be especially beautiful here at Tofukuji. They have this small gully, which is the most famous area for the viewing of the fall colors. And we were looking in particular for the Abbot's Hall because at the Abbot's Hall, there is a very classical pebble garden that we wanted to see. And finally, we got there. Be sure to explore well enough that you can find that little known Zen meditation pebble garden at the Abbot's Hall and linger here a while to absorb the harmonious serenity. Smaller pebble gardens can be found scattered around various other temples. True aficionado of this style of pebble garden accented by symbolic clusters of large rocks might want to visit the most famous version at Ryoanji Temple in Kyoto's northwest outskirts. To Fukuji is a Zen Buddhist temple. And these are aids to meditation. You sit and quiet your mind. And this kind of pebble garden is designed to be looked at rather than walked through. So there's a veranda and over on the side we have moss covered hills that symbolize mountains. The rocks symbolize islands, it's said, and the pebbles symbolize the sea. But at the same time, ascribing all of these meanings to such a garden is somewhat limiting because in Zen itself, the process is emptying your mind and just gazing out upon this beautiful, calm, and relaxing vista. And you pay an admission to go into each of the sections of the temple, and it's well worth it. It's a little confusing because guides at the gateways who sell you the tickets don't speak any English, and they'll give you a little pamphlet that'll have a map and that will help guide you around through the grounds. And always the colors around us here at this temple garden were really, really enhancing our total experience. And then we ran into a very friendly local fellow who knows a lot about the temple complex and told us about Tofukuji. He was proud to show us the grave of one of Kyoto's more famous geisha because she was married to the nephew of J.P. Morgan, the famous financier. That was a rare treat, most enjoyable to speak English with an elderly local resident, a friendly guy who was proud to point out a few sites for us. Tofukuji was listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994, one of many in Kyoto. There is no admission charge to the complex of Tofukuji, and you can walk freely around some of the grounds, but there is an admission fee for the Zen Gardens and that bridge to heaven with the great view of the fall colors. Tofukuji Temple is located on the eastern side of Kyoto, about a mile southeast of the Kyoto train station. So you could walk here from the center or take a bus or train. The Tofukuji Station of Japan Rail stops nearby, as well as the Keihan Electric Railway. This is part of our series on the temples and gardens of eastern Kyoto, the Higashiyama district and also we'll take you downtown in some of our other videos. We have arrived at Maruyama Park, which has an enchanting pond encircled by beautiful landscaping with a picturesque footbridge in the center. There's no need to walk up the gully, but do consider having a meal at the traditional restaurant in the small park serving Shojin Ryori vegetarian temple cuisine. We'll show you their famous potatoes shortly. Maruyama is a wonderful and famous place to do some relaxing. And there's some ducks, there's crows, some locals feeding the ducks here. 
These wild birds have become so used to people that they are very friendly. Even the ravens, which are normally quite elusive. You can easily walk into Maroyama Park from a couple of nearby famous temples at Yasaka and Kiyomizu. Chianin Temple is on the north edge of the park. So this is really one of the most popular strolls in all of Kyoto. We're in the eastern part of Kyoto, the Higashiyama district. A little stroll along the stream here. The park is most famous for its cherry blossoms in the month of April, which attract millions of people. This is a classic walk, and it leads you into another path with a bridge crossing over the pond, and the path can continue up along the stream if you wish for another quarter mile. It's a very easy stroll with these beautiful weeping willow trees, more of these spectacular colors all along the way. And there's some nice restaurants here as well, too. In a moment, we're going to take you into one of the classic restaurants of Maruyama. There are some statues and small shrines scattered throughout the park. You can find a half a dozen traditional hotels, the Ryokan, all around the periphery of the park as well. Very peaceful place to stay. There's one quite famous gourmet restaurant with three Michelin stars, Mizai. That same three-star rating was given to five other Kyoto restaurants. And altogether, 85 of the restaurants in Kyoto have got one or two or three Michelin stars. A total of 110 stars, remarkable. And now we're entering a venerable old restaurant, Hiranoya Hanten. It was established 300 years ago. This is considered a temple restaurant where they feature the famous Shojin Ryori Vegetarian Temple Cuisine. And they have the Imobo Cuisine, which is one of the renowned dishes of Kyoto. One of their specialty items here is the uh, potato. It's a mountain potato that was brought down and replanted at the Maruyama Hill area. And you can see I was very satisfied with the large and delicious meal. When you've seen enough of the park, you might walk a few blocks over to the traditional Gion district, which we're showing you in another movie in our series on Kyoto. This is part of our series on the temples and gardens of eastern Kyoto, the Higashiyama district, and also we'll take you downtown in some of our other videos. Be sure to look for them in our collection.